Are you a home grower looking for a little bit of help? Are you ready to learn as much as you can about your favorite hobby? The Homegrown Helpers brings you informative interviews from experienced growers that have taken the next steps in their journey and decided to help you grow top quality cannabis all in your home. Now welcome in our host, Rob Smith, along with this week's Homegrown Helper. And welcome to the show, everyone. Are you ready for this week's grow tips and tricks from another homegrown helper? Yes, me too. Who do we have in store for you this week? Well, Victor Shepard joins me on the line to share some tips he's learned from many years of growing cannabis. Victor loves working with veterans and patients and started his consulting business out of a passion for helping people just like this, the people that need this medicine the most. I need to remind you about our content only package that we just launched over at GrowPass. MyGrowPass.com is where you can find that and all our other packages. The content only package is perfect for our international friends out there that want to join up and get a little more growing content from us. You can get access to the Ask Us Anythings, which we do on the first Saturday of every month. You get the archived GrowCast content. So everything generally older than a year old from Jordan over at Growcast is available to you underneath that content only package. Then the resource section, which we just launched the deficiency chart and this month is a little quirky, but I think Jordan is putting out his roasted toasted buffalo wings, I believe, as a recipe along with a little growing content. And what else is there? Oh, all of the exclusive member audios. So uh, basically a unedited commercial free podcast episode from Wolfman, Jordan, Rich, and a bunch of other people on there. Steven Raisner, uh, Dr. Coco has done a couple episodes for us. So head on over to mygrowpass.com. Click the sign up page at the very top there and join us. For as little as $14.95, you get access to all of that type of stuff. Like I mentioned, we just recently launched that deficiency guide for all of the macro and micronutrients. Really proud of the work that Jordan pulled together for that one. Thank you, Jordan. During this episode, you're going to hear a little audio switchover quality issues, what have you. I was in the car on the side of the road in Maine recording this episode. I had to do an emergency trip to go get some of our trimming machines repaired up there. And, uh, you know, I got a good guy that knows our machines in and out. If you don't know, uh, we rent trimming machines across New England under the name Green Harvest Solutions. You can find us green-harvestsolutions.com. But for some reason, the recorder stopped recording at like six minutes. And uh, I didn't realize it for probably another like five after that. So, you know, Victor and I linked back up and recorded the first part of the show over again. Um, I didn't think it was necessary. There was some good stuff that we really hit upon in the episode. So we just recorded the first part over again. So you'll hear that kind of switch over right at the question where I ask him about increasing yield. We switch right over there. So uh, many thanks to our MyGrowPass.com partners for the show. We have three of them. We have Atlas Plant Trainer, Danny Danko, and Humble Garden. We thank you all for your continued support as we roll into quarter three of this program. Atlas Plant Trainer, you get 10% off as a listener, 25% off as a member. Danny Danko will sign your purchase book as a Blue member. And Humble Garden offers you 15% plus free shipping as a listener and 25% with free shipping as a member. Grab those codes about halfway through the show. And the last thing we're going to do is beg and plead for your five-star ratings and reviews. I will not be shameful in continuing to ask you of this. It's the one way that you can show your appreciation and help us, you know, reach more people and move up those rankings. So this one comes from Terpy Maine underscore 207. Love the name. Um, being from Maine, I, I really appreciate that says great podcast love growcast and homegrown helpers some of the most informative podcasts on cultivating cannabis at home highly recommended so thank you terpy maine for those kind words 
Now, without further ado, under the five minute mark, let's get you into Victor Shepard. And welcome, everybody. I am so excited for this week's show. We recorded it twice. We uh, had a little audio recording issue the first time that Victor and I got together. So here we are to record just a few minutes, and then we'll get back into the original recording. So welcome to the show again, Victor. Hey, thanks for having me. So Victor, why don't we start you off with the easy ones? Um, Why don't you tell us your full name, your company name, and how you got into growing cannabis? Sure. Uh, My name is Victor. I'm the founder of Blue Ridge Consulting. I'm originally from Virginia, and I've been cultivating cannabis since 1995. Uh, After seeing veterans and cannabis patients struggling to acquire and produce clean cannabis, I decided to begin consulting a number of years ago. But the passage of the 2018 Farm Bill solidified my decision to consult publicly. So, and and you help um, lots of growers, not just veterans and medical patients, correct? I I do try to. If people reach out on social media or if, you know, if there's someone locally who we meet and, you know, there's a, a, a trusting relationship, absolutely. So what about, you know, you've been growing for 20 plus years here. Um, What about, you know, the cannabis plant made you want to take the leap and and get into consulting and and help other people learn how to grow? Uh, I think it was just purely recreational when I was younger and curiosity. Um, I didn't understand or notice any therapeutic value until I was much older. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed the use. So as soon as I got what I deemed relatively good seed, I, I started planting them. And you've just really found a passion for helping out patients and veterans specifically? A- absolutely, especially veterans. Um, like I mentioned before, I believe that, you know, they go through a lot of turmoil and that turmoil doesn't end when they return home. And I think that that's often been the point where veterans are most forgotten and anything that the community can do to prevent another veteran from taking their lives or preventing them or their families from suffering. I think it's very important that we do so. Now, have you heard about uh, the New England Veterans Alliance? They just started up a veterans cultivation program here in in New England. I have. They seem like a very solid group of people. Yeah, we have a few things in the works with them. Um, I actually just talked with the founder, Derek, this past weekend at the Harvest Cup there in Worcester um, about some opportunities where you know, Growcast and the Homegrown Helpers can help promote this veterans cultivation program that they're doing and also help kind of contribute some gear to them, you know, know, maybe hold a raffle specifically for the veterans cultivation team there, or, you know, we've been talking about having a uh, used grow equipment drive, you know, at some grow shops around New England and, and just collect people's used bulbs and hoods and, and stuff that they have moved past, but is certainly useful for a, uh, a first time or a new grower that just needs to provide themselves with a couple ounces every couple of months. That, that's amazing. That's really good. I've, I've most often donated genetics um, as I haven't had a, a whole lot of extra gear, but genetics and time uh, and your knowledge, I mean, spread it and help them for sure. It takes away that learning curve and it gets them to, to medicine quicker. Yeah, I think I mentioned uh, the first time that uh, this was not recording was uh, that, you know, my commercial grow up in Maine, we used to change out the thousand watt HPS bulbs every two cycles because it just made sense from a commercial standpoint for us to do that. Mm -hmm. But at one point in time, I had more than a hundred thousand watt HPS bulbs and I brought those all down to Derek and the crew at Neva. And I think it's taken him almost two years to go through those hundred bulbs and and hand them out to different veterans and you know reduce their impact and and everybody's carbon footprint a little bit you know reduce reuse recycle but it's gone a long way in helping a lot a lot of veterans and and we're pretty proud of that move that we did that's great that's really great so victor why don't you tell us about your current grow setup bring our audience into the grow room with you you know what the size of that room is what type of lights, size of pots, what are you using for soil? Give us the whole rundown, if you would. All right. Well, let's cover a Gorilla Light two-foot by four-foot setup. Um, I've got eight plants in number one nursery containers, so there's one per square foot. 
all of those plants see water only from the point that they're a fully rooted transplantable clone to the initiation of flower. Um, they all grow in a custom peat based mix. Uh, it's uh, a diluted format of the thick high super soil. And I can also sprout seed in that and it works very well. Now at onset, when I induce uh, on the 12 and 12 or 11 and 13 light cycle, I feed um, jacks three, two, one until the point of flush. And then I'll often use a, a compost tea or a microbial substance or supplement weekly. And then I'll discontinue the feed and the, the microbial supplements about three weeks before harvest. So the feed and the pH inputs always vary per varietal. But as a rule of thumb, I try to keep my input pH between 5.8 and 6.2. And I almost never feed above an EC of 2.0 in that mix. Uh, the light source for that setup is a platinum p150 and two five inch clip fans move the air uh, the tent is scrubbed by a can light 9000 connected to a small four inch inline axial fan uh, the tent operates at about 44 decibels no odors ever been noticed when it zipped up and uh, i found as long as the lung room or the room that the tent is sitting in is it's pretty stable. I don't have any temperature swings or fluctuations, and I've never had any issues. Great. That is some incredible detail there, folks. So please go back and listen to that if you're setting up a new tent. Um, Victor pretty much ran it through uh, from top to bottom for you. So go back and give that a listen if you're getting ready to set up a brand new tent. That was That's a pretty good setup uh, for for people to get going and, and get the hang of this thing. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. They use almost no power. I've got to, I've got to definitely give props to a lot of uh, the LEDs on the market. Yeah. LEDs have come a long way in just a few short years. It's been crazy to see the progression of the quality of, of light that comes out of it, but also the lack of heat and the footprint. And it's really just been an amazing progression to, to kind of watch from the outside. Oh yeah. Yeah, I agree. So getting into some grow advice here, Victor, can you share with us your tips for ensuring the most healthy plants? Like what are you telling a new grower that they really should pay attention to when it, when it comes to the overall plant health? Um, pay attention to the details. Um, and every input yields a response, good or bad. So try to keep your environment as consistent as possible. Develop methods and procedures uh, that work for you. But also pay attention to the nuances of your plants. If you're running more than one cultivar, they're not going to operate or they're not going to respond to the same feed, maybe not even the same pH. So, you know, develop a, a comfortable operating procedure and then fine tune everything as your plants tell you. So do you mind sharing with us, you know, what are your perfect environmental setups in your tent? Like, what are you, what are you looking for when you get a tent dialed in? I would hope that the the environment would be dialed just below 80 degrees um, with, you know, roughly 50, 55 percent humidity through the flower. It can handle more during the, uh, the vegetative cycle. But to be honest with you, I've never had uh, my vapor pressure deficit dialed in in a tent. It has always been much lower in humidity and a little lower in temperature than I prefer for the LEDs. I've yet to dial that in. Okay. What could somebody do? you know, if they're really struggling to get that VPD dialed in, like in your scenario, um, you know, what are some steps that you could take to increase that temperature and the humidity in that tent to get closer to a nice VPD range? Uh, utilize climate control, control your exhaust and your flow of air so that you can actually maintain proper humidity and temperature for a long point before you have to either evacuate the room or, or start to cool things down. Um, and that's when uh, the grow can get really complicated and you can start to spend a lot of money and start to to utilize a lot of equipment or um, a lot of controllers. Now, do you prefer to maintain the same temperature and humidity throughout the day and the night cycles? Or do you like to, you know, see that 10 degree temperature drop when the lights go out? I'd prefer to see a little bit of a shift. And, and me personally, I prefer my humidity to be just a little lower when the lights are off. I don't like it to climb up too high. But um, then again, I, I, I can't necessarily control the tent being in a, in a lung room um, 
my experiences have always been best with uh, a sealed room or a room or garage or basement that's been modified and actually set up for a, an actual grow site or an indoor grow. Okay, great. And um, what type of advice would you give to a grower that, you know, we're all limited by by the number of plants that we can legally grow and everybody's always looking to to get a little bit more out of their plants. What type of advice would you give to a new grower trying to maximize the yield off of a limited plant count? Train your plants. Absolutely. It's it's the most low cost input that you could you could possibly do to increase yield. Um, I wouldn't necessarily always suggest hopping your plants. Um, low stress training is is always something you want to try to do first. But yeah, it, it all falls around plant training. Um, more nutrient inputs is not always your your best option. You know, I've heard a lot of chatter lately about people you know, not topping. Mm-hmm. What is your personal feelings about the reasons that you suggest not to top the plants and prefer to low stress train? Mm. It does diffuse hormones. It seems to, to broaden the plant structure. So if you're growing in a limited space, that can be kind of problematic. Sometimes it just outright decimates the yield of that particular cultivar. I find that if, um, I, I, I can't recall what it's it's called. Um, I guess super cropping. It's been referred to where you're damaging the plant herd lightly throughout the stems mm-hmm. and uh, the main trunk of the plant. That's what I'll commonly do. Some plants actually need uh, a firm hand, and you can hear the herd crack. But I've noticed that some uh, Ken cultivars and the OGs kind of just need uh, a light fanning, so to speak. You just lay your hands over the plants and press down on the branches lightly enough to get them to bend. And that's enough to start getting them to to start bushing out and putting on a, a stronger stature. And it's it's always treated me well personally, and I'm not a, a botanist, so I really can't explain the science behind it. Uh, just something that's always worked in application. Sure, sure. When it comes to topping, it's the recovery time and the plant has to heal before it rebounds and grows up. You know, regular listeners to the show know that I'm very passionate about plant energy and plant training. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't need to get into great detail about that, but I've learned a little bit lately about the, the reasons for not topping and, and it was interesting that you brought that up. So thank you for that explanation. Sure. So Victor, what are your typical IPM protocols in an indoor garden specifically, you know, what are some of the products you use or don't use okay. um, in the garden and, and your practices to keep a clean and healthy garden and, and plants? Sure. Uh, I try to use uh, predatory mites and nematodes for the soil mixes, and I add those as often as I can, two or three times a year to my barrels um, or to a new mix. Um, I also use SNS209. It's a rosemary acid based spray that I use just out of out of caution if I'm visiting another garden. Um, I'll use that or peppermint bronners in conjunction to spray my veg plants down after I try to make sure that I've gotten rid of clothing and, and everything else and clean myself up before entering the garden. I do not take in outside cuts currently, but if I did, I would probably use Monterey's takedown spray as a preventative. And I always advise people to not only spray your cuts that you take in, um, you know, what you spray with is, is, is your own business, but also try to drench. If you can get your cuttings before they have roots, make a dip so that you could gently swirl the plant and get your coating on it as even as possible. So if there is something that's been carried in on it, you have the best chance of, of getting it off of the plant. Okay, great, great. Was that SNS-209 or SOS-209? SNS-209. Okay. I mean, you're just rattling off all sorts of products I've never heard about. I love it. Yeah, the Peppermint Bronner's is just a, a liquid soap from Dr. Bronner's. Yep, yep, you're the... The second uh, interview in three weeks that I've um, brought up Dr. Bronner's soap. So that's interesting. I've done, you know, coming up on 30 interviews for the show, and, and you're the first two that have mentioned that. I, I love hearing these, these new tactics, and I'm sure our audience does as well. Yeah, I've been fortunate through the years. I've seen mites, but never been decimated by them, fortunately. 
uh, the bane in my existence is always fungus gnats. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm always over the uh, all over the predatory mites and nematodes when I can get them. Okay, cool. We're going to take a quick break for our sponsors here. First up, we have Danny Danko, the man, the myth, the legend himself, has recently published a book about a year ago now, but still pretty fresh on the presses, fresh off the presses, whatever you want to call it there. You can get his book, Cannabis, A Beginner's Guide to Growing Marijuana, by going to growcastpodcast.com slash Danko. That'll go straight to the Amazon link where Danny gets credit for those sales directly. So do him a favor and do that up, growcastpodcast.com slash Danko. And if you've purchased a book, make sure you leave a rating and review on there. Help Danny grow. Uh, It would mean the world to him. So Danny gives back to the community by giving our Blue members, if they purchase a book, he gives it to them signed. So he signs it, does a little inscription, and uh, sends it to them personally, straight from his personal stash at the High Times office. So check out Danny Dinko and the Cannabis Beginner's Guide to Growing Marijuana book that he wrote. Uh, Next up, we have Atlas Plant Trainer, my product. You all know that. Atlas Plant Trainer, you can get 10% by using code GROWCAST or 25% off when you become a member at mygrowpass.com. We also just recently dropped our prices by 20%. All our swag is on sale. Everything is a permanent price reduction over at atlasplanttrainer.com or growbiggest.com. You know the thing, it's a customizable click together tomato cage essentially that allows you to grow to any size shape dimensions that you want all you have to do is click connect and clip your way to bigger yields the biggest yields that you've ever seen we hear it time and time again at atlas plant trainer so last up humble garden humble garden offers our listeners 15 percent off and free shipping i believe by using the code growcast at checkout Humble Garden is the makers of the world's first HPS filter for your smartphone. Get rid of that yellow high-pressure sodium light that comes straight from the bulbs and make your plants look a little more natural. It's a softer, kind of like a fluorescent light, a little bit brighter maybe, that comes through on those lenses. They're pretty cool. Check them out at humblegarden.co or on Instagram at humblegarden. You can grab your filter today at humblegarden.co using the code GROWCAST at checkout to save 15% or 25% off when you become a member at mygrowpass.com. So thanks so very much, guys, and uh, we really appreciate all of their support. Thank you, and uh, let's get you back to the show with Victor Shepard. So what type of characteristics or character traits are the most important for a new grower to kind of cultivate within themselves in order to be the most successful grower? Mm. I'd have to say strong work ethics and a willingness to learn. Those, those two are very important. Strong work ethic and a willingness to learn. Great. Just writing those down. Love to reference that stuff later. And pretty much finishing up here, do you have any last bits of advice that you'd like to share with our audience you know most of them are new to intermediate growers and we get i'd say about six to seven hundred downloads per episode right now so what are the last parting words that you'd like to share with them uh sure uh to keep trying new things whether it's cultivars uh growing methodologies um it never hurts to try to improve upon what you've you've already learned uh definitely plant more seeds and share your wisdom you you seem like a pheno hunter, so can you expand on on your desire to get people to keep trying new strains and and planting more seeds? Yeah, variety is the spice of life, and <laughs> there's so many there's so many chemotypes out there that that have yet to be discovered. I'm sure we're not going to find them if we don't continue hybridizing and planting as many seeds as possible. Now I got to dig into that just a little bit. You know, the, the seed market and the strain market, in my opinion, is, you know, I don't want to say out of control, but, yeah. um, you know, th- there's lots of breeders out there that are, quote unquote, chucking pollen and, and not stabilizing their strains and not putting good work out into the world. 
and just trying to capitalize on this, this pheno hunt boom. Yeah. I, I guess, what do you look for in a breeder? You know, you mentioned a couple before, but what do you look for in a breeder and, and how do you feel about the current strain market? I mean, yeah, we can always take a, a cookies cut and, and cross it with everything else under the sun. And, and now it's, you know, wedding cake and caps and, and there's, there's lots of major strains out there that just seem to be getting crossed with everything under the sun. Um, do you have any feelings on, you know, the kind of dilution or the, the overwhelm when it comes to picking a strain for, for some new growers? Like what, what would your advice be to, for a new grower, where to start when it comes to picking strains? Hmm. Yeah, you're, you're right. It can definitely feel overwhelming when you're starting to search the seed market. Uh, try to search for breeders that are as transparent as they can be about their their genetic inputs and their parentage. The uh, the breeders that are that are willing to discuss and answer your questions always support them for sure. Hmm. And there's always going to be a place for for cookies and the cakes as there is. Um, hazes and skunks sure they've they've kind of cemented themselves into the uh the community it's it just depends on on what you really like to consume or what works for you um i i try to look for breeders that are are transparent and honest about their work but i'm also a fan of old school flavors and genetics so i i generally migrate to old school cuts or people that have have obtained or are working with known old school cultivars from the Cincy seed uh, catalogs from the the late 80s through the 90s or Super Sativa Seed Club. And I think there's there's a lot to be said about introducing land races into a hybrid project too. So if, if you're a new grower, any hybrid that you find where there's been a solid land race reintroduced, there's there's always something interesting to come out of those projects. So do you like going after the strains that have been on the market for a while and, and kind of work through the instability or, or do you like going after the, the fresh crosses and, and the fresh stuff and, and taking your chances there? You don't find me going after the fresh stuff too often. I, yep. I'm not able to, to purchase as much as I'd like and I've still never seen a, a gelato cut uh, in my room or um, <laughs> any wedding cake, but I enjoy Kim hybrids a whole lot. Yep. So within the Kim family, you're going to see some instability if you run enough of that seed stock, depending on where you acquire it from. I guess it just depends on what you really love to consume or what you really love to grow and how much you're willing to to weed through, depending on what breeder you you acquire genetics from. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple breeders basically you know, start off with the, the terpene profile that somebody might like, you know, like what smells are, are appealing or what flavors are appealing to you. Mm -hmm. And then we can work our way backwards from that and, and then find the right strain that is going to suit your medical needs or, or your recreational desires. Yeah. I thought that was a good place to start. Yeah. And I think having that, that goal, a uh, breeder with a goal is, is very important cool. and not just to, to cash out. And, um, who are some of your favorite breeders? Ooh, Bodie, for sure. Yep, you mentioned him and, before. And uh, uh, Duke Diamond at Dominion yep. and the crew that he works with, uh, uh, AK Bean Brains. And, you know, I've had some really good seed selections from Rare Dankness. And before that, I mean, I, I've, I've had good selection from, from earlier companies that, that got started within the States, like when DNA went to Amsterdam. There, I think there's good stuff to be found everywhere. You just need to do your research. Cool. Yeah, um, I, I believe Duke Diamond is is going through some personal stuff right now. I'm not really 100% sure what's going on, but I know there are some breeders out there in the world that are holding um, some auctions from some of their older seed stock and some prize packs that they've been holding on to to, to help Duke through whatever he's going on, uh, got going on, so... Yeah. Be sure to uh, kind of look around on Instagram and, you know, if you like Duke and uh, Dominion Seed Company, you know, um, try and find some of that stuff going on because he doesn't want charity, but he'll, uh, he'll definitely, you know, take the, the benefits of a seed auction or, you know, some breeders helping him out. So, yeah, it's, it's important to help out as much as you can and give back to the community. I think, uh, um, Stray's daughter 
is has racked up some medical bills as well. And I think uh, Shu at Hetty Gardens has got a an auction going to help raise some some money to cover her medical expenses as well. Yeah, pay attention out there, guys. I mean, yeah. if you want to be part of the future of the cannabis industry and and the part of the movement, you know, don't be afraid of helping out the people that are helping you. I, I mean, I know we all pay for that seed stock, but you're paying for their work, and and these people are are people. You know, they're real people. Absolutely. You can go to these trade shows and you can meet them and you can shake their hand and get to know them. And if that helps you, you know, put a face to the seeds that you're putting in the ground and, and if they've helped you with any level of your pain or, or personal problems or, you know, even gotten you high, um, you know, consider helping, helping others out, whether it's a, a breeder or somebody else in the space that might need a helping hand. Uh, don't be afraid to, to lend it when necessary. So last question before we wrap this part up and then we get into the bonus content. And I guess it's not even a question, but if you are looking for a little bit more from Victor or any of our other guests, head on over to the homegrown helpers.com slash bonus. And you can gain access to the last five questions that we ask Victor and all of our other guests right there on one page. You can download them for on the go listening. You can pound them out. They're typically like 10 to 15 minutes long. You can, you know, get those done either on your computer, on your smartphone. You can download them or listen to them right there on the webpage. So, Victor, before we dive into the bonus content, where can our audience learn more from you and connect with you if they so desire? Well, if you have any direct questions, you can email me at blueridgeconsulting at outlook.com. And I'm also on Instagram at blueridgeconsulting. And there's a sister page, uh, Blue Ridge Botanicals, and in Blue Ridge Bandit 420. Great. Where does the uh, Blue Ridge, the Blue Ridge Mountains in West Virginia, is that right? Yeah, in, in Virginia. That's Virginia. where I grew up. Okay. Yep. That's what I thought. Yep. Great. And audience, of course, uh, you can reach out to Victor or any of our other guests directly. Or if you're looking for a consultant, you can email me at rob at thehomegrownhelpers.com. And I will do some legwork and find the right consultant for your grow room size, style, setup, and uh, most importantly, your personality. Um, you know, we want to link those people up because a learning journey, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time with one person learning from them. So we want to make sure that your personalities match up as, as well as the skills to learn from. And that's what we use the show for. So... Thanks, everybody, to listening. We're going to wrap this up and get on out of here. Make sure you head on over to mygrowpass.com and check out all the features of our membership program. We have another AMA coming up in another couple of weeks, as well as our second 5K quarterly giveaway happening on January 1st. So get in now, maximize those entries for uh, that next drawing, and um, happy growing. We'll catch you later.